two, three hundred thousand on your socials, big Facebook page, and then you take yourself off into the wilderness and you disappear. You know, there's a saying you can't heal in the same environment you got sick in. I realise the systems aren't designed for us. They're not designed to make us thrive and prosper. They're designed to distract and make you consume. How did you go on the path to find God though? Like what was God it? found me. My decision today that I make isn't going to just affect me now. It's going to affect my kids, my partner, and my entire future. Who are you when nobody's watching? Work on that character. Work on that person. I'm quite an extremist when it comes to my decision making and things that I do. Everyone's going to be using a crypto wallet in the near future, whether they like it or not. What do you think were the things that caused you that much loneliness? Quick one before we jump into this podcast. Do me a solid favor. Hit that like button, hit subscribe, and drop a comment below this video. If you're looking to remove images, videos, search results, or fake accounts online, go to contentremoval.com. But don't take my word for it. Here's on Mosey. Frank, you're a fucking legend. I just saw this. Layla also thinks you're a legend, which in my mind means you're... <laughs> which also which means you're a double legend in my mind. If you get my wife to think you're a legend, then you're, you're extra cool in my mind. Dude, thank you so much, genuinely. That was um, such a pain. Welcome back. Today, guys, we have a man who's returning returning to the world from from an from an exodus is the only way I can describe it the man's been the man's been off grid for at least 12 14 16 months of his life that I've known him I've known this man for years he's been on the podcast before with I think it was number 11 I think Mitchell Orville welcome back my man welcome back to civilization <laughs> thanks for having me brother and um yeah, it's good to be back to civilization I guess you could call it yeah mate yeah so mate what is I think a lo- look, if a lot of you out there want to listen to Mitchell's journey, go back and listen to the original podcast. We discuss it all in there. But I want to keep this episode of, of what's going on currently and what's going on in the future of you because I think we, you know, we've talked about the past in that other podcast and we've covered that. We ticked it off. But like, what what is you know? Give me give me a few insights into what's been going on in the last sixteen to eighteen months and and everything that's been going since you've been off social media. Because obviously, you go from having this big following, two three hundred thousand on on your socials, big Facebook page, and then you 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 take yourself off into the wilderness and you disappear on disappear on us. Talk me through that whole process. Yeah, well, I reckon as people probably could have gathered in our last conversation, I'm quite an extremist when it comes to my decision making and things that I do. And I guess I realized that, you know, I'd been online for so long. So call it five, six years of, you know, sharing my everyday, what I'm doing, like just absolutely everything. And it came a time, I think it was, yeah, during the pandemic where, I don't know, I just wasn't getting the same feeling out of sharing anymore. And even when I was sharing, I was starting to think, is am I sharing this because I want to or am I sharing it because it's currently trending or because that's how it's being received by others and I started to lose that sense of identity within myself and it was sort of a scary feeling if I'm going to be honest to realize that almost my value came from how I was perceived online and when I um, started to dive into that I thought well I I owe it to myself to fix that, if that makes sense. And I feel like, you know, there's a saying, you can't heal in the same environment you got sick in. And I feel like for me, that was social media and nothing against social media. As you know, it's a tool and it's a platform that, you know, you you can use to your advantage, but you've got to have the boundaries with it to make it work for yourself, if that makes sense. And I realized I, um, yeah, I lacked all those boundaries. I lacked a lot of awareness when it came to that. And I realized that I was, you know, living in a digital world, serving a digital space that wasn't really serving myself anymore. Yeah. yeah so yeah. I felt like, you know, hey, who am I when I turn it all off? So it started off just deleting the app on my phone, you know, you got rid of my YouTube channel, deleted Instagram, deleted Facebook. And I thought, Let's just live a little, if that makes sense. And man, before I um before I knew it, I realized that wow, I'm a completely different person on the inside than what I was projecting on the outside. You know, I'm quite a reserved person. I, I enjoy, you know, a lot of quiet time. I enjoy so many different parts of my life that I sort of had lost along the way of feeling the need to share and feeling the need to co- always be doing what's say even currently on trend. So yeah, being able to take a step back out of that was huge for me. And then I guess once I stepped out of the online world, I guess it just really, I became addicted with that exit and the 
the shift that I took away from, say, you know, I'm going to call it like society almost. I, I went down the extreme rabbit hole of being like, okay, who am I as an individual now? What is my personal philosophies? What do I, you know, I had, I've got two kids, I have a partner, I had all these things that, you know, were deserving of my time, but I wasn't really sure how to show up as myself anymore. I'd lost it along the way. Because I suppose you didn't even know who you are, who you actually were. I because- didn't know who I was unless I was on Instagram being told who I was. And I was like, that's so damaging. <laughs> how many people do you think are living their life like that? Most. Even being like back online now, it's so easy to fall back into the same patterns and the same feelings and thoughts with the awareness that I even developed in that, you know, 12 months. It's a hard, it's, it's, I realized the systems aren't designed for us. Does that make sense? They're not designed to make us thrive and prosper when you're in them. They're designed to distract and make you consume. So it's, it's all part of the game of life. And I suppose that that works on both the side of the the genuine consumer that goes on there to post family photos. And it also works on the side of the creators because the creators get drawn into the what's trending. We've got to make that stuff. And the consumers get drawn into, we've got to consume what creators are making. So like, and unless you have a boundary set to make that relationship with that platform healthy and put your limits on yourself, you can get drawn into a vortex where you're just consuming all kinds of different stuff and it might not even be what you want. And you you know what it's like even, you know, trying to set a boundary with someone you know. Now try to set a boundary with hundreds of thousands of people on the internet. It's not easy. Does that make sense? Especially not when they've had access to all parts of your life for a long period of time. Which was my doing. That's what I had to accept. Does that make sense? I gave people and everyone the inside and the opportunity to do so so it's like you know it's a double-edged sword when you look at it in the, in that in that way so for me it was just about accepting that hey i lived this version and style and it served me and it did all these great things but also i'm entitled to be able to live the complete opposite if i want to and then i can draw whatever parallels i like from that way of living from the other way of living and you know try to find a healthy balance for myself so what were some of the powerful insights you got after you'd been in this like exodus from social media for like two, three months, you're, you're two or three months in now, you started to open up your mind, you started to see things a lot clearer, understand more about who you are. What were, what were some of the things that started to drop into you then? Well, I immediately found God. That was the first thing. So I feel like for me, even finding God would not have been something I would have had the same success with if it was an on, if there was an online world because there was a part of me that, you know, I, I I was even judging myself at the start. Does that make sense? It's a, it was a big leap of faith for me. And, you know, no one could have told me that. I had to discover it myself. Whereas I came from a world where I was waiting for people to tell me what was cool, what was not, and, and following. And I was quite good at that, if that makes sense. So for me, I, um, yeah, finding God was the, by far the most powerful thing that I did as an individual in that time, which was, it was my own journey and my own doing and it didn't come down to anything else or anyone else around me how did you go on the path to find god though like what what was god there, found me was there like a sign was there a, pre- a preeminent point in your life where like kind of that that you un- the universe showed you something so i as like social media was a massive part of my life my income everything like it was my safety net it was everything i knew does that make sense it was my skill set it was what i'd been immersed in right and I shut the door to it and in that time when I shut that door to it I I didn't know God then right but I was thinking like this I'm doing this for me so like I hope something else comes out of it something has to replace you know what I'm doing because on paper my decision didn't really look that smart on everything else it didn't look you know like the smartest move financially smartest move for everything but internally I just had this battle going on that I knew it was right for me and within two weeks of leaving social media I ran into I was at a cafe and I met a random person who's now my best mate and he was someone who introduced God to me and it was something that I was able to pick up and run with over the course of you know the next nine months I was able to go through a journey with one other person that was shut off to the rest of the world where I was able to learn for myself and it, was, it wasn't based on anyone else's judgments, judgments or opinions. Ultimately, every decision I made came back to myself and I fell with it. And yeah, it was, it was, a, brilliant, it was a brilliant way of discovering for me. In, in regards to like how 
the audience then can can gather some information from that. And what would you say is the best way to in, like improve your relationship with yourself? Because I, I feel that there's a lot of people here that are in there that you know they've got businesses. They're trying to be entrepreneurs. They're trying to get more out of life. They're trying to you know just just they just want more for themselves in all areas of their life. How would you say that um, they could they could help them find out who they actually are more? You know, get get more involved in that. So for me, it was massively came down to like my personal philosophy and what the information I knew, if that makes sense. You only know, you can only do what you know, if that makes sense. And I feel like people these days, we're not really good students. We're not really good at going out there and seeking the information we need to help ourselves. We sort of just walk around waiting or praying that, you know, we're going to have a good day or hoping that something good's going to go right for us where... I feel like for the first time ever in my life, I proactively searched and looked for, you know, the things that could help me, the information that could serve me. So living with intention. Yeah, with a massively intention, like massive intention, which it comes down to like not consuming as much because I wasn't in a world that's tricked. To, uh, the, the, the algorithms and systems are designed to suck you in, to be on there scrolling in loops and consuming, right? Like once you break... Once you break out of that, all of a sudden there's a fair bit of free time in your day. And in that free time, right, you can use it to waste or you can use it to build on what you want to know and what you want to learn. And for me, it was I fell massively into the trap of wanting to, yeah, d- learn a bit more about myself. So diving into personal development was massive for me. And what kind of, what kind of things were you diving into then? Uh, um, reading, learning, um, a massive one for me huge um, was definitely my, which I think brought it all together, was just my discipline, right? I was able to keep a really strict discipline of even not even not using social media, right? What, what that did for me in terms of discipline and proving to myself how capable I am of, you know, s- saying something and sticking to it, it built strength and it built honor in myself. Whereas I feel like, you know, when you're mindlessly consuming, right, and you don't even realize it, subconsciously, there's a fair bit of shame and regret that goes on in your day and in your night, where when you're leading with intention and you're aware of, you know, what you're consuming, what you're reading, what you're doing, and actually, like, your head's up and you're aware of it, when you start to tick those boxes, like, I don't know, I feel like there's like a weight off your shoulder at the end of each day that slowly just gets less and less and less and less. And, you know, you start to become proud of the person you are, the decisions you make. Well, they start to become more conscious, essentially, is what you're saying, isn't it? Because, yeah. you know, you start to make them with the, with the intent that you're going to do this and do that and do and, this and, and do that. And not conscious to society, which is what I feel like we could, it's conscious to yourself. It's how you feel. It's your own personal design. Like I wasn't out there, you know, making these decisions because it was what was currently aligned or it was just like, I didn't actually know what was going on outside in the real world to a degree. It was more what was going on inside my world. What made me go to bed and feel good at night? What made me feel, you know, proud of myself? And it was, yeah, it was ticking those little personal goals and challenges that I'd set for myself. And they, yeah, once you, um, they sort of just string along a bit. And obviously when we went out for a meal the other day, one of the things that I didn't realize at the time because obviously it just came into my peer view was the fact of like you haven't even got a mobile phone number now. No, and I still don't. And 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 when I was I was trying to get my head around this at the time when I it took, it took me it took me a little while to get my head around it. But give me give me an insight into how that actually works in the real world because I was trying to explain this to after you had that conversation. I thought this is a brilliant idea. I, maybe I don't need a phone number. And I was saying to I was saying to a couple of my girlmates about. I might get rid of my phone number and they're telling me every reason why I can't do that. And I'm like, no girls, you don't understand. Like I've yeah. had this conversation today. You can give me, give me an insight. So for me, that, that one was, as I said, I'm quite extreme, but that one came down to the, the access points for me. So I said, okay, well I'm cutting off the access points because I felt like that was a massive part of what was, you know, the information, what was coming in was always affecting, you know, how I was perceiving myself. So I thought, let's cut off the access points and, give myself the time that I needed and deserved. And I thought like everyone around me that mattered understood. Like I had to, I let them, <laughs> I don't have a number, blah, blah, blah. I can connect to Wi-Fi when I'm in Wi-Fi and I can FaceTime and I can answer a message off, you know, when you're connected to Wi-Fi. But apart from that, like I'm not contactable. And that does come with a level of, you know, respect that you need to have 
for, you know, say your partner, your mum, your dad, like in terms of organizing logistics and stuff like that. But that's where for me, because I had so much time for myself and awareness for myself, I was able to, you know, organize and structure my day from the minute I woke up to the minute I went to sleep to make sure that my decisions that I made personally didn't affect everyone else around me. And if they most like... Most people respect boundaries, right? It's takers that don't respect boundaries. So when you when you set like a firm boundary like that and state your intention and if it's, you know, if it's morally correct and it adds up, well, I don't, I don't think people can really have a problem with it. And it also allows you, I suppose, at that point to kind of ascertain who is for you and who's against you in terms of like your, your, your friends, your mentors, your family that are for and against you. And you can kind of increase and decrease your time with the people as you see fit from that because they, they're, showing them, they're showing their true selves, right? And that's, and that's literally, it was like natural selection for me. It just, it, it just the right ones dropped off, and the the ones that I knew, that needed to come close, they gravitated, they understood, and it was like my circle got close, small, and tight, and it worked. And it, and it, and it, of course, it gets rid of all, any bad influence that might be in your life, any negativity, any animosity that might be there. How's it, how do you go about doing business though when you don't have a phone number? I have a business partner, <laughs> and. He's my good friend, so he's always accessible. And I give my, like, if I need to contact someone or needed to do business, email, face-to-face, old school, catch up. Like, there's ways around it. Yeah. Think about back in the olden days before when they just even had the wall telephones, you know what I mean? So, it's like, even when I catch up with someone, like, you just, hey, yeah, we'll go there, blah, blah, blah. You don't even organize until you're closer. Hey, where are you? Yep, I'm around. It won't be long. Yep, let me know so when you're there. So it forces you then into getting organized because you have exactly to Exactly right. Ahead. If yeah. I wanted to catch up with someone, okay, where are you? 1230, I'll be there, sweet. And if you're not, well, sometimes I would organize something like that and I'd give it 15 minutes and I couldn't contact the person and if they weren't there, I leave. And then I'll get home and say, sorry, bro, you weren't there. I was, I was there for 15 minutes and I couldn't contact you. Oh, sorry, bro, I was 20 minutes. So, so. It's, well, it's all good. I don't know. I, I'm not angry or anything, but it didn't work. Yeah, and I suppose if, if something's meant to align anyway, it'll align whether whether you whether it's whether and that's it's why finding God for me too, bro, was so amazing because God just opened every door for me. Everything I needed kept opening for me, and He kept proving to me, "You don't need your phone. You don't need this. You don't need this. You walk with me, and I've got you." And 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 that's just kind of a that's just kind of a connection with something bigger than yourself, essentially, because because God can be anything to anybody, can't it? I mean, obviously, it's like certain people find Jesus, certain people find other things, and this that and that. And I suppose we won't get into the semantics of which God's right, and all that stuff. But but I think I think as I said, bro, this is like for me, which is I want everyone to take from this podcast is personal philosophy is so important and that's like what works for you works for you i'm not here to preach anything it's like i found something that works for me and that's what i run with and that's where i'm, I'm an honest open person happy to chat about it but as i said it's not i'm not here to to tell to force someone's way of living because well if, if even if i think about it from my point of view it's like have i completely found god as in as in a, a religion type god i not not as of yet but i know that i'm being led down a path by something bigger than myself and whether i call that god the universe this that, and the other, i'm still trying to figure that out but am i 100 percent being led down a path and at, and are things being communicated to my gut to allow me to feel to, to show me a pathway absolutely yeah i wouldn't be where i am in podcasting it, it, just down to just down to me treading the road alone there there is some greater force up there that has to tread with you otherwise you wouldn't be led down these paths i couldn't agree more that's 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 kind of how i see it and probably i know it's it's probably like a politically correct way to put it but like otherwise people get what people get drawn into with this this whole god thing god as a philosophy is about believing in something bigger than yourself so that you can be allowed to be guided through something where people get it wrong in my opinion is they start fighting over who's god's right and wrong it's like well that's that you just missed the whole point the whole point is just let yourself be guided it's like the it's the semantics with anything you can get hung up on all the information if you want or you can decipher what you want for yourself and make a life out of it so you can get sit around talking about you know the pros and the cons all day or take the information that works for you and run with it and build yourself a good life and a good way of thinking, a good way of feeling. And How has this um, enhanced your relationship with your partner and your children and everything like that? 
Man, it's given me faith in everything. I, the, I can ha- hand on my heart say right now, I don't think that even me and my partner would still be together if it wasn't for being with God in these moments. Having two young kids, 24, 26, trying to fill up your own cup, your kids' cup, each other's cup. Like life is hard, do you know what I mean? And I don't think it was ever meant to be done alone. And that's where I always was going wrong. I felt this massive responsibility on my shoulders 24-7 to always be getting everything right for my partner, my kids, for everyone. And it's like now those stresses, I just cast them into God's hands. And I have so much faith in in things happening for me and not to me that now I don't, you know, I see things as, you know, as I, as a, like things can still concern me, but they don't worry me. I'm not absorbed by them. I don't fall into and let that become my identity. And you know, I, I have this strong faith in each situation that okay, it's for something better. And I feel like that's an amazing philosophy to carry with you. Well, the the one of the things that kind of someone was explaining to me that's, that's really he's done hundreds of millions, and he said to me, if you don't have, if you don't believe in God. He said, like, in terms of, like, whatever God is to you. If you don't believe in whatever God is to you, universe, God, I'm just putting that in the same bracket. But if you don't believe in, ultimately, there's something higher than you, you're basically, Frankie, making your podcast your God. And if you make the podcast your God, guess what happens if you have a bad day? Do you know what I mean? You, you, you're, you're leaning all you're leaning all your eggs into into this into this physical into this physical realm rather than leaning leaning into the universal realm. Where if you lean into the universal realm and then trust you're guided by it you, and something bigger than yourself, it kind of allows you to be free and allows you to move and allows you to be guided. And that's what he was trying to explain to me. And this guy's done hundreds of millions. Like he's not he, like he's done well in business, but he still knows he's guided by something bigger than himself. Agreed, bro. I couldn't agree more. And I just, it just, it's just something that uh, I, when he explained it to me, I was, it was, it was, it was powerful because I thought this guy's no mug. Like, do you know what <laughs> I mean? Like, like he know, he know, he he's got a few, few, um, a few reps, reps more than me. So like That's maybe, it. and and quite a few people I've asked, quite a few people that are higher up if they believe certain things, and they, and and they do believe in something bigger than themselves. And it's kind of a fundamental thing that I've not really touched on in the podcast, but on the, on the back end of it, when I've gone back and and re dug up and re conversed with these people, yeah. they, they tell me there's something bigger than them. I'm like, okay, now it makes all sense. Well, it's 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 isn't it nice to believe that there's something bigger than just yourself? Yeah, hundred it's percent. Nice, it's it's a humbling feeling, and and I feel like as human beings, sometimes it's nice to be humbled. Well, the the the, the profound thing was what you've just described there. I would I'd put it in a different language, but what you what you described in in your journey was essentially what happened to me, but in a different way. The, this this podcast was 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 my was my pinnacle event, right? It was my pinnacle? Was I put everything on the pedestal of the podcast? But when I detached myself from the fact of like I do the podcast to serve the world, but then this, I'm ser- I'm serving something bigger than 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 this podcast, then it, it all became a lot easier for me, and, and I, I became a lot freer, and it, it just it just made things expand more. I can't explain it to you, but it just it just made things way more peaceful. And I think that's one of the other things that you know is great to touch on. Sometimes it's really hard to explain, and that's why it's something that you sort of have to run with yourself and feel. And that's where you know unless you um. Unless you really do go inwards to look, you'll you'll sort of always will be just guessing. I think you can tell as well what what when you see people doing things that that genuinely light them up from the inside out. I think you can I think you can you can see the people that are led by a bigger purpose than themselves. Agreed. And I I, I notice it massively in in the space. I mean, obviously podcasting. I see a lot of people start podcasts, but they're not for the right reason because I can see straight through it, <laughs> like because I'm in it. So I know I know I know I can see when someone's lit up from the inside out, and I can feel it in their voice. And when you when you podcast and when me and you're on a podcast or me and another guest like you can just tell with the with the how the language comes across and the immersion of the of the, of the words that there's feeling in it and i don't think you can do that with every kind of everything so that's that's how that's how i see it and it's Love hard it, to bro. describe I no it, 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 i think we've i think we if you think about the the subject that we're touching on right now it's probably one of the hardest things to talk about in the world do you it, know it, what i mean it, it is because it's like you know you by saying certain things about certain things you can offend so many different other people and and i just wanted to people to understand that like 
you know a lot of pe- a lot of people are, are spiritual based people these days especially in australia it's a very spiritual place like a lot you know believe in angel numbers guidance universe yep. all this that and the other the you whether the universe is your god whether you believe in the hindu god the christian god the um the islamic god it doesn't it, none of that matters as long as you're guided by something bigger than yourself essentially i think once you find the belief beyond yourself you you allow yourself to the peace to be free within yourself does that make sense yep makes sense bro Makes and total I, uh, sense. Just, it just, it just, it, it dawned on me. Like speaking to a lot of people, like, it's, it's a mad topic to touch on, isn't it? Isn't it? It's, it's, it, yeah. Just mate, I, it, when you, when you, when we go, when we go, you down can see why room. they've like they've spoken about it or argued about it for so many, how many thousands of years? Hey, like it's it's a never end. And I think it's because us as human beings, we we don't even have the information. The enough information to be able to perceive what's possible. So we could sit around and talk about it all day, but our minds cannot even compute well, what if can you, be done. If you believe in manifestation, you believe in God. <laughs> Simple as that. If you believe in because ma- that's that's the way I've had it explained to me as well. It's like you believe in manifestation, you believe in anything like that. You believe in law of attraction. All this stuff is, is God's work. Yeah. Like whatever God you're, you're, you're claiming is your God, that's God's work. You know, yep. you have to, it's, you have it's to something higher something. than yourself. You need that higher power. I mean, do, was, have, when you found the higher power within yourself, did, did, does that mean your family found it at the same time or did, did it heal generational trauma or how, how is, how is it? It was a bit of a domino effect in terms of, um, and as, like, as I said, like when I mean I went quite inwards, I mean like, my journey was even personal to myself within my family. I didn't preach. I didn't tell them what to do, nothing. It was just I lived my life and like naturally let them ask questions and be inspired by whatever. And within, you know, two, three months of finding God, my mom wanted to come to church with me. She came once, fell in love, obsessed. Um, then my brother came and I watched, I literally watched God touch his heart in church during a song and I watch his body, his eyes shake, cry. He's not been the same person since. He's lost so much weight and he's, he's pretty... He trains with me every morning at 5.15am, hasn't missed the session, goes twice a day, down 19 kilos, never seen him smile so much, never seen him laugh so much. Like, it's crazy, mate. And it's like, my I, like if you, all I need, for me, like I'd already experienced... 10,000 things before that. But for me, if it was just that that I saw, that's enough for me to yeah. understand. I've watched his struggles. I've watched him go through everything under the sun that I've went through. But even worse, I've watched him use drugs. I've watched him do everything and be just looking for this external happiness that he could just never find. And then, bang, in one day, so, he got and, it. And here's the thing, right? You don't need to explain what happened as long as it as long as, as long like, as it happened <laughs> as, as long as it happened as long as as long as um i was with lino in this in this place where we're filming this podcast right now i was with lino and i was doing a, a, a breathwork journey and there was a massive release of trauma from my body during this journey right and i came out of this out of this state you know you obviously you've been through that as well with yep. lino and i came out of this state where i've released this trauma from my body and I'm 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 going to Lino, but but what have I released? And Lino's like, Frankie, you don't need to understand what's what's left you as long as you know it's left you and you feel better for it. And it, profound, and, and, Lino, and, and, I love and, and, it. And I'm like, that that's that just that's always sat with me. Like, there's a lot of people in life that are wondering why certain things have ended in their life, why certain topics are ending, why certain circumstances are ending, why relationships are ending, why business arrangements are ending, but everything's for the purpose on your journey and, and every journey is inherently different. So I literally, um, I posted something this morning that was like, I'll read it. Perfect. It's here. It says, someday you'll be really grateful that God gave you what you needed instead of what you thought you wanted. Yeah. yeah, yeah and yeah, yeah. I feel like that's the, the human flaw. Like we all, there's always, you know, we have this idea of what we think we want or think we need, but sometimes God has a better one for us. And if you just stick it yeah. out and if you just stay consistent, you'll yeah, get there. Yeah. But I feel like most people tap out before that happens. The way, like, I think Steve Harvey said it best. He speaks about when you pray for something, right? He says, it's like, as soon as you pray for it, God puts the parcel out and he sends it off, but he just doesn't tell you the arrival date. Most people give up before it gets there. And I think that's so true. 
Yeah, and they just tap you out. You just don't know the yeah. time of when that parcel's arriving. If you just have to stay on Faith Street, that's your street, Faith Street, stay there and just keep waiting. And I promise you, one day that it'll rock up. And um, Mate, th- when I think about this whole podcast journey, and you've seen me from the start, because obviously... You- literally from the start. From even from just... Even from how... Tell a story about when we um, crossed paths that day and you you know, you know told me your plans for your podcast and you watched me change based on your... <sighs> Fucking hell. <laughs> yeah. So, we, so I, I was walking down... This is a strong story. I like this story because it was a good reality check for me too because it shows where I was sort of at in my journey yeah, as well. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, it's, it's, yeah so I was walking down walking down this path by the beach and I, obviously I meet Mitchell and his beautiful Mrs. Chloe and, and Artie and they were, they were walking down by the beach with the pram with Artie and that and me, me and Mitch got into a conversation about everything that I'm doing and, and obviously his journey and obviously by this point we've already done a podcast probably about a year a year previously to this conversation and the, I think you were asking me and ascertaining on what my vision was for the podcast yep. and every, everything that was going on in my life and, and I said to you look, like I clearly laid out what I wanted to achieve and how I believed that I was put on this planet to be one of the top 10 in the world at this and probably, you know, one of the top ones that's ever lived. And I, and I believe that in my heart of hearts. I believe that's what I put it for. I went, the day I recorded that first first part of the podcast, I felt it. Bro. I just can't describe it to you, but I just felt it, right? And I saw you, I saw, I saw you looking at me and, and I thought, fuck, he thinks I'm fucking smoking crack. <laughs> <laughs> and, he, and you looked at me and you said, um, I think you started to say about I don't know. It was you. I said. I said something, and then you. You changed your. You doubled down on what you, you said. You. 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 I suppose. I think I hesitated. You. You hesit. You hesitated, and 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 I think you tried. Tried to, at the point. You would. You weren't meaning to, but you tried to give me a reality check. I think that's exactly how I'd consider it too. Yeah, yes. you're trying to give me a reality check and bring me. Bring me bring me down to um, a lower consciousness, so to speak, without being nasty. Yeah, I agree. I was, I was trying to bring you to my level of... Your level what of... I, my level yeah. of how I perceive the situation, not what I, what could have been yeah. perceived. Because yeah. of my the point I was at in my journey was I had no faith in higher good, this, that. I was stuck in who I, what I thought and what I knew. And then, you know, you reality checked me. And then I'm like, no, 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 Mitch, like, you don't understand, right? This is... This, this is like happening. This is what it's going to be like. I'm going to be one of the top one percent in the world. This, that, and the other. This is how it's going to be. This is how it's going to roll. I've just kind of set this path. Whatever, whatever this is, this is happening. Like, and and then you, then your whole state changed. And then you 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 came into sync with me because I I suppose I I'd punched through your wall. I'd gone. Do you know what? Fuck this, Mitch. No, no, no. We're going here, bro. Like, and that's see that, bro. That was the power of faith. You having faith in yourself, bro. It gave me faith in you. And then, and then the other day we went out for a meal, and we sat there for this meal, and that was the same day that I became um, on Spotify top one percent most shared podcast in the world. That day, that exact day, and I, and I was like, "Wow, this is profound." Because isn't remember, it? We, it's we, we, just we to thought, show me, it's saying, "Here's your statistics, Mitchell." <laughs> <laughs> Here's your statistics, Mitchell. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That is just, uh, it's just it's mad, mate. Is that is that? And is, that's why it was actually. That's honestly. Uh, that's why I actually paid for the meal, and I was like, you know what, I I, I owe him this meal. This was a, it was a nice um, reality check for me, and I was happy to, I was happy to do. It. I was I was very proud actually. I think I think that was a part of the of the collective journey that we're kind of meant to share, and you know, couldn't agree more because it it, it kind of it kind of came full circle as in like I'd stated this to you. And I didn't, and went, and can I just say, guys, when I stated this, I didn't have a fucking clue I was going to do it. Like, in all fairness, I didn't know, but I just knew I could. And, and I'm not going to state anything of what. But I'm you gonna, believed. That's literally exactly. You just believed in it. Pro, pro, privately, I state where I'm going. Publicly, not so much anymore. I don't need to. I, I, I'm not doing it for for all that stuff. But I know. I, but I know exactly where we're going with this and what we're trying to build and everything like that. And I, no, I appreciate you coming around to to that belief man i'm more than around i'm here for round two yes mate and 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 honestly i just want to say to you to you from my point of view i obviously knew you four and a half years ago i think when you first came in the gym and to see the chain the profound change that you've made in your life and now i'm now reflecting because you're a totally different person you know drugs drink um you know late nights everything that everything 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 completely polar opposite to you how so what i want to ascertain so to give the audience some value is because there'll be people that listen to this right Mitchell, that have 
they they probably might have a glowing business or a good relationship but then but they but they have a uh, other things in their life that they really need to pick up on but they've got bad relationships with whether it be alcohol abuse of drugs yeah. this that and the other How, where do where should people start and and to allow themselves to free themselves to knock over that whatever the biggest domino is to them how do they get to that point where they can knock over that big domino so they can keep re- reinventing themselves to the point so for me it was always about obviously my first one was i'm going to always say i couldn't have done it without god because i know i couldn't have but obviously that was my that's personal my personal thing my second thing is my purpose always had to be aligned and i feel like when i first started to you know stop drinking, stop doing all these different things. I didn't have a clear purpose on to why. I just thought it was the right thing to do. I thought I might, you know, have a better life and all that stuff. But when I was able to get all, lay all my cards out and, you know, I came from a position, like I came into a position where I was having a kid, bro. So for me, my purpose was so far greater than just myself. Yeah. So all of my all of my addictions, all of my wants, all of my selfish needs, my desires and stuff, they quickly become eradicated when you, you're looking at a son that you know, you're responsible for and you're raising and ultimately they're going to be a reflection of you. And you know, that purpose for me was such a, a, like such a divine cause in every decision I made and still make to this, this, to this day because I'm not making a decision. My decision today that I make at this minute, isn't going to just affect me now. It's going to affect my kids, yeah. my partner, and my entire future from that from going forward. So it's it became such a greater good, right, with that purpose. So for me, I would say identify your driving purpose, that thing inside you that goes, okay, whether it is, yeah, you know, smoking or your, your business, your drinking, whatever it is, Understand why. Okay, if you're not feeling great about it, you've got the shame, you've got that feeling inside you that's not going away. What is it you want it to go for? What is that thing out there that your ideal self, why is it judging you? What's Where are you going to get to that's going to make it all worth it? Because that's the, that's effectively the position you need to aim for. Yeah, and you could, I suppose you, what you're saying is you can essentially re-engineer backwards from, from, that, from that outcome. So fi- find out exactly where you want to end up and then reverse engineer the that's outcome. That's it. And then start, and then just, yeah, it's, it's having the, um, the power and the consistency to, to get there. And if, it's, if your purpose is high, great enough and high enough, you will get there if you want it enough. And for me, ch- having kids, that's all I needed. Right? I realized, bang, that's what I, I want to be, good dad. I want to have a good family. I want my kids to grow up in a real... I want my kids to be better than the generation we live in now, ultimately. And I yeah. said, that starts with me. I can tell them everything. I can say to do this. But I know he's... My son is just a... Sons, but my son now who's two and a bit, like he's just a mirror of everything. Yeah, so yeah, yeah. It's so like, it's up to me to be responsible for the reflection. So you... You know, you you healing yourself allows you to 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 allow your son freedom. You know, because they get the, you're you, breaking generational yeah. patterns as soon as you do that. Does that make sense? Like yeah. it, it starts with you, and someone has to do it. And like I could see. I can see the same patterns that I've taken from my dad. I can see the same patterns my dad's taken from his dad and my just, mom and vice it, it versa. Just, it just all comes down to ownership, doesn't it? Ownership of what ownership of whatever that that is that is for you. Do you know what I'm saying? And and really owning owning yourself and owning your sovereignty and owning you and know. owning the dark owning the dark parts of you too. I felt like that was a massive one. It's like understanding that you know you you have those desires you have those wants those needs and stuff but hey that's okay that can be a driving factor for you not against you that's fuel at the end of the day i realized you know my thing that like i had was that, like i realized a lot of my addictions and vices came from loneliness right and that was that feeling of i don't know what it was from being a kid or whatever i just felt lonely a lot even around people i felt lonely and then i realized well there's a driving factor for me if i feel lonely i have Two kids, a partner, all like all these things for me that can fulfill that, like that that feeling. So once I identify, like yeah, it's identifying your purpose. Then, re- as you said, reverse engineering it, working out what are the emotions, what are the triggers, what are the causes, and then adding them all up together to realize what are the th- like what makes you step away from your purpose ultimately. And w- what do you think were the things that caused you that much loneliness? Um, I think honestly. I think it was a feeling from the inside. I, I just, 
I don't know. I think it was, yeah, I was, I was always quite reserved as a kid. I was always, you know, on the PlayStation. I was always like, when I look at my life, it's not what it would seem, if that makes sense. Yeah, like, yeah. I, I, I'm a nerd, bro. I'm a very big nerd. I spend a lot of time reading on the computer. I spend a lot of time playing, like, I, I did spend a lot of time playing games. Like, I did a lot of things that, you know, were lonely to a degree. And that was my foundation of, of, of growing up. And then when I think about it, the only time that I, you know, I came out of my bubble and I came out of my shell was when I would drink, when I would party, when my parents would have friends over. And th- th- that was, you know, my way of expressing. And it's an easy pattern to fall into. Yeah, no, no, I, I, fu- I fully get what you're saying because there's, I think there's a, a lot of people out there that if you don't live in your true authentic light, if you don't lean into what that light is to you, then you're going to get taken down this path where you build, you, you'll you build this whole friendship network and whole network around you that doesn't represent who you truly are. And then that's when you can get into serious problems then. because You nailed it. Because now you're like, which probably happened to you, when you started to realize, wow. Bro, my, my friendship group that I created, I realized, before, like, so this was years ago, before I moved to the Gold Coast, I only had friends that did cocaine. <laughs> but I created that. Does that make sense? Because that's what I felt yeah. comfortable around. Yeah, so it's like, yeah, yeah. you, we're, we're masters at engineering our own realities yeah. and to make them suit us. So, but when you have the accountability and the awareness to go, oh, that's why, but it's okay because I can still use that same principle and approach to re-engineer it and create a friendship group around unconditional love, support, yeah. g- g- better values. Does that make sense? Yeah, 100% because I, I know back in the day, my a lot of my mates came from like the boxing gym or from the gym and that was all, that was the only place I got, got my friends from at the time. And then obviously as you reinvent yourself and get into the world of business and start go in different locations, you start to attract different things into your life. And you start to think, oh, actually I find this more interesting than I did that. And it's like, it starts to question every narrative that you believe. But I do believe that every one of you listening to this, and I've said this so many times on different podcasts with so many different people, and I just keep nailing it into your head, it's like, until you until you write down on one side of the piece of paper who you're pretending to be and on, on the other side of the bit of paper who you actually truly are, until you get that down and you're radically honest with yourself, and no one else sees this but you, but until you get radically honest and granular with that... I love it. That, that, that frees you because you can kind of see. And, and also, uh, another thing that I've done many times is I always write down everyone I know on a piece of paper and I write, I put a tick next to the ones that give me energy and cross next to the ones that take oh, energy. Oh, wow, I love that. I've never heard of that. The cross next to the ones that take energy from me. And, I, and then I audit all, all the people around me and I only, I only surround myself with ticks, not crosses. You know what I'm saying? Like, is it important? It's so important. Clip that. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? It's so important though. Mate, but what's, what, what's got the next like 12 months looking like for you like in terms of what you want to achieve and do now? Because obviously you're back on social media so you obviously want to use it for a different type of platform yep. to what you used it before. So for me, I'm actually considering going into doing podcasting myself. It was, my thing is, I feel like what I learned is I have a bit of a, you know, a voice. I have a bit of a way of thinking. I have a bit of a way of, you know, I have a way of seeing things that people are interested in. And I think, you know, I feel like a moral obligation to share to a degree. And I feel like stepping out of social media and coming back in, like, I had a lot of gratitude from people that I'd never met, that I didn't know, that was that literally thanked me for being back and for, you know, sharing small parts. And, you know, I think that you know, I feel like that's nice. And for me, I, you know, I've mindlessly shared and showed things before online that, you know, probably could have done the opposite of that. You know what I mean? I've been through the flex era of, you know, showing off what you've got, shopping this, buying things, you know, just to feel valued online but it's like okay i want to be able to come back and offer a little bit of insight a little bit of information to everyone else and if they want to listen to it cool if not all good and then apart from that bro i'm just going to use it as a place to network to connect with friends see things again and just try not to be swept up and consumed by it yeah just use it for more more light and positive yeah just as a, a use it for the tool that it can be what kind of businesses did you build on the back of leaving social media? Because I know obviously your main sources of revenue at the time when you were on social was obviously brand deals, stuff like that. But how did how did your how did the way you earn money evolve? So it was more so not even about how I I, I made money through like I made I had a, a job for a little bit at a, at a lawyer and tech company doing um a little bit of consulting there. 
but mainly, man, I did was investing. So I made quite a bit of money online, made a lot bit of money through selling my house and stuff like that. And I actually had liquidity for the first time in a long time, but didn't know what I wanted to do with it. So for me, I um, yeah, I went down the rabbit hole of Web three and started to learn about you know a bit of tech and the bit of the tech world, and I ended up yeah. Put, I guess investing a fair bit of money and learning a fair bit and yeah, was able to make some personal decisions based on what I learned and what I researched and what I loved in that time away. So where do you see the investable opportunities and the kind of like, I know you're not giving investment advice on a podcast like that. I want to want to make that clear. Yeah, definitely. Where, where, where do you see the opportunities in web three for people and where should they start looking where you see perceived value? So f- for me, where, where I was able to, get value was I which is interesting and it shows it shows how similar you know you can be to your to your parents and you know follow the patterns my dad was into dot com domains back in the day he used to purchase dot coms and sell domains and he made like you know did a few different pretty good sales back in his day through selling I think he sold like digitalpost.com and things like that. And I remember always, you know, I had a, a little bit of an insight as to what that looked like. And for me, I was, yeah, I stumbled across domaining, but in Web3. So the new, what I'd call the new .com the era. Dot the dot .eths. And um, yeah, I, um, I was able to apply similar principles through what I saw through my dad and what I've learned over time through what I've seen as perceived value, if that makes sense. So one of the things that I did pretty pretty well on was like numbers so like because of being you know I, I saw numbers on cars you know sell for number plates and stuff like that and I was able to see that you know there's value in having you know palindromes and low digit numbers and you know special numbers in you know just as a flexing asset on a car now let's give them some utility on the blockchain and this is your s- primary address for sending money receiving money building decentralized websites identified being identified on the blockchain and i was thinking well everyone's going to be using a crypto wallet in the near future whether it they like it or not and one thing that i know is you need to be identified so i was i saw what i thought was you know a, an opportunity for the future in terms of taking ownership in some of those um yeah some of those domains and i was able to i was quite early so it was back in i think it was last november actually it was still when they were all on the registry i was able i registered a heap of rare numbers and heap of rare words and names and stuff and yeah i've got a bunch of really expensive assets now still even in the barest of bear markets as you know what's going on in the crypto world it's insane and but ha- have you sold any of them for big cli- big clips yet uh, i had like a one of them i paid 180 bucks for i had like a 18000 us offer but i didn't take it yeah like i've got a fair few like i've got uh, about 250 different ones yeah i noticed that. I, ch- I remember when you displayed the wallet on your on your that's Instagram. only one of my wallets too yeah i know but i had to look through some of the ones you have you have some you have some good names there it's, it's good assets to buy where other where where else have you been looking in terms of web3 um i went i've put a fair bit into uh a company called vv collectibles yeah the v, uh, so vv to me i think are going to be like the ebay or the amazon of web3 so it's going to be where, where i think people are going to collect and buy everything digitally yeah, because they've got the limited editions of Disney yeah. and Marvel. so they all they 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 went they focused on licensed IP right. So about four and a half five years ago, before NFTs were even a thing, they went into like you know your Disney and everyone like that and said, hey, give us your you know your items on shelves that aren't selling. Give us your IP to them. We'll turn them into digital collectibles and we'll make you you know millions of dollars in revenue. They signed up all of the biggest companies ever. And then yeah, they um during the NFT I guess boom, they um for me what I saw had the best the best roadmap, the best team, yeah, the best everything and I spent yeah, a fair bit of time buying comics, collectibles, digital stamps, <laughs> you yeah, name but, it. Yeah, because I was I was buying I bought some NFTs early days and then you showed me that VV thing and like it, it, there is some power in knowing that you've got a one of three Disney gold, blah, 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 whatever it is. 
there is some power, there's, there's power in the branding, the intellectual property behind it. And that. it's also like, you've got to have faith in where the world's going. So it's like, I truly believe like in how digital this, no, I don't think that people have even comprehended yet how digital this future is going to be and how much we're all going to live inside this meta- metaverse and how, how I, I, the way I see it is everything that we want to have as value, we're going to prove it digitally, not in person anymore. So, in essence, you're saying, like, what, clothing? It's going to be the new flex. Is your digital, is what you, you... So, for example, I saw a video of this, you know, this chic in Dubai with, like, the rarest comic book collection, the rarest everything like that in all of these vaults and stuff like that. How many people do you think can go through and see that? Yeah. Maybe 100 people? His vault, right, in the metaverse, it's public. How much do you think he's going to value that vault more knowing that all of the world can come through and see it, but they can't steal it, they can't replicate it, they can't do anything with it. It's his, he owns it, yet it's there for the world to see. Yeah, so one of the things I was looking at is I've got a few NFTs like World of Women and stuff, and and you can, in the future, you'll be able to license them to digital galleries in the metaverse. So for example, what VV's roadmap already is, is like that's why I've I've stacked comic books so hard because they're going to eventually, it'll be like, I'll have a comic book store in the metaverse. I'll be able to charge tickets to read rare comics that you can't see. How many thousand, how many millions of people read comics around the world? And when you only have, you know, there's some editions with only... A thousand copies. There's some editions with the max is thirty thousand copies. That's not that many comics when it turns to millions of people wanting to read them. So, I'm preparing myself for a digital future, and that's just the way I see it. And I um yeah, I got told a comment from someone that I'll never forget, which was find out where the world's going and get there first. So I spent the last year, Position, what I believe, positioning, positioning myself positioning. in a place for what I think the world's going. And if I'm wrong. I don't really give a fuck either. Yeah, because you... Because I... I yeah. And guess what? I... It was my doing. I found it. I did it. I believed in it. So, if I'm wrong, I can live with that. It's not someone else's thing. Yeah, but you can, you also, because of how you let yourself get quiet and granular inside and took yourself away from all the noise, it allowed you to be, you know, it allowed you that much time to be able to think. That's what I mean. It was my... Everything in that, every dollar I invested, everything I learned was my, was my doing. No one told me what to read. I was, wasn't watching Instagram stories on what to buy. Do you know what I mean? It was, yeah. it was a personal hunger and an appetite. And I was on the, I was on the app. I was on the, the forums and everything for hours. And, day, and it's like, if I'm getting addicted to this, I other, know other people are going to. It's other, only other a matter people, of yeah. time. Because there's always, there's always people like you that like the same stuff. And, and, and my thing is, I have to give myself, that's where I have to give myself a bit of, you know, say credit. It's like, I've, you know, survived in this industry because of doing what I know and doing it first and then people following and liking and enjoying. So it's like, just because no one's watching, I still have to give myself that belief and know that, okay, maybe I'm just early. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and the world's going to catch up. And the world's going to catch up. Yeah. There's, there's, so, there's so many different avenues you can, you can fall in the world of crypto. I mean, I, I just think a lot of these coins will fall off and a lot of this, a lot of this other crap will... It's, it's like everything. You've got to sort the shit from the clay. So yeah. I just... Dig, dig, digital intellectual property is going to be one of the biggest things on the blockchain. And I also believe in things like... I believe every house, every home will be on the blockchain. Smart contracts. I believe the cars cars and regos, insurance will all be blockchain. Smart contracts will change the world and how we transact. That's it. Whether we like it or not. Yeah. It's just... It's actually going to benefit us... It's massively. It's for the it's for the people, and that's why, right? This it's why it's such a slow process, and it's why you see all of the shit that you do see because it's like the system doesn't want the system to serve the people. The system's to serve a select few at the top, and when you have a decentralized system that's out there to ser- to to serve peer to peer transactions and you know to empower the people, well, you're going to have some sort of resistance, aren't you? Yeah, 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 and and also it's going to save a lot of time in terms of like you think about. Com- completing completing on the house and how long it takes when when that house is on a digital platform when that house is a, is a, on the blockchain now all of a sudden it's like well he decides that he wants your house he he transfers the money into your wallet and then as a byproduct of that that go that house <laughs> transfers into your wallet that's that pretty, that's, that's just smooth, got hey? that's just got rid of a that's just got rid of legal the need for a lawyer isn't it that's got rid of a need of a real estate agent clips a lot of fees doesn't it when you start to when you start to understand the whole when you start to look behind the curtains you can see why hey 
Mm. It's mental. It's mental. The opportunities that are going to be opened. It's just that a lot of the stuff that is first to market is bullshit and kind of clouds it, and we strip it all back. I, I think the only two um, things that are applicable as value and currency stores are going to be Ethereum and Bitcoin. Everything else yeah. is kind of a waste of time. Yeah. Like, like, in all fairness. Yeah. Probably, probably, maybe Dot and Cardano might might stand the test of time, and a couple of others. But most of it will all just fall by the wayside, won't it? Yeah, that's what I. Yeah, I think so too. So. In terms of like, are you are you still supporting? Um, obviously, working with Chloe on ZEP and stuff like that. Do you still have involvement in the other online businesses that your missus runs? Or she's um she's got a full team under her now, so she's got a new manager. She's got yeah, she t- she does most of that stuff herself now. So she's um she's crushing it. I don't have to do much with ZEP at all. Mate, it's smashing life, isn't it? You re- you really have like completely freed yourself from from the. From well, the that was my thing. That's what I learned, right? I learned that what killed me was leverage. You know what I mean? And you I were did, saying this the other yeah, day, weren't you? Uh, my goal was to get as deleveraged as I could. So lever like I remember reading this saying. It said three pe- things kill a man: ladies, lever- leverage, and liquor. And I was like, <laughs> I understand the ladies and liquor thing, but what is leverage? You know what I mean? And I remember th- and I, then when I understood it, I was like, wow, this is like. It's your overheads. It's your everything. It's it's what has that part of you. Does that make sense? And I learned through being offline for that, you know, 12 months. I don't need a lot to be happy. So I shouldn't be that leveraged. Do you know what I mean? People are always telling me you should, you know, start a business, do this, have this, build a brand, do this. But the reason I didn't like that was because of the leverage that came with it. So I said, how do I live a life, right, to make what I need to make and not be leveraged? So I don't need a number. I don't need this. I don't need people needing me and that was what I started to, to design it for and that's why I fell in love with the systems and the, the investments that I did because it was like it was all me it's all I needed was was me so so the so when you say leverage you're saying not just you're leverage in terms of you having to be there and also leverage in terms of debt debt yeah all yeah. leverage in terms yeah completely yeah no I understand because I like obviously we, we, everything that's going on in my life right now like you know on Friday I, f- I, f- I fly back west you know i'm going i'm going exploring i'm, going, I'm taking the podcast on the road again yeah. and all that was because i you know similar to what i was saying to you the other day it's because like i'm sat here and i'm paying x amount of money to to live this this life year after year same same life over and over again it's like well could that be invested into podcast could that be invested into growth yes yeah, so let's just move that but one thing i one thing i realized that you've done and i've had to i've had to realize myself is the fact of in that leverage and knowing what leverage is is the fact of like you have to understand that in order to go out and get what you want new you have to let go of everything yes that's tying you into this past yes. you can't you can't hold on to fuck all because it'll just hot it, it, that that attachment is an energetic connection to the past and it keeps you rooted that's why i love the saying attached to nothing connected to everything that's the goal yeah and you so you've literally then you you're not taking on so when that's why you got rid of the house and everything is it just yeah. to get rid of just to get rid of any debts that were- I just yeah I didn't yeah I didn't want to be leveraged I wanted to feel free and that freedom created so much living space opportunity time with my kids you know what I mean and I have just so much faith in who I am and where I'm going and that's where I fell in love with personal development because it's like as long as you are always working on yourself and who you are You'll be fine. Doesn't matter what you're doing as a such. As long as you're working on the inside, you'll be you'll you'll be great. But when you when you had a home, and we don't have to go into exact yeah. figures, but when you go into home, in terms like percentage wise, how much of the home did you actually own, and then oh. how much did the? Was, well, was to the, be honest, we did we made a million bucks in a year off our home. Yeah, we sold we bought it and sold within the boom of the year, and we we cleared a million bucks. So. Like we did well in like we, that was a pretty rare for a f- like you know a home that you yeah. buy and sell twelve months later. So yeah, you d- you did well. But in terms of like when you were saying you felt over leveraged, was it was eight? So you put down twenty percent and then you still eighty percent. You felt over leveraged in the home that you own because like obviously a lot of people- honestly the leverage stuff or like I felt I I, I learnt that feeling almost after I was. Yeah out of that if that makes sense so yeah. I didn't even know how much it silently killed me until I was out of it but as I said that's still that was just a philosophy that worked for me at the time and it's like now already it's like you know I'm growing and evolving and changing and it's like but would you say then for like because obviously a lot of a lot of young English a lot of young American 
young Australian ki- kids are getting told to go- leave school, get a mortgage, right? Are you saying that, or what's your advice on that? Should should people be looking at that? Or is that- honestly, I would say don't take advice from me because I don't really know. Hey, like. Does that make sense? That's yeah. not, I like I do. Uh, that's why I do what works for me on a feeling space. How it feels, if it feels right, I'm I do glad it. you said that. I'm glad you said. Don't that. look. I'm not a genius. I'm not nothing. I'm not an investor. I'm not like I'm someone who goes off intuition. I do things that I love. I do things that I feel, and that's what serves me. And I feel like that's what should serve you. I, I'm I'm glad you said that. Thank I'm you. Glad you said that because I think that serves this audience the best way possible. I think we're built like we're all gifted this intuition. We're all gift. If something, if so, think about if something feels right, how naturally do we lean into it? Yeah. If something feels wrong, we hesitate. Yeah. If there's hesitation, explore it. If you just lean into it so openly, just go for it. Yeah. And that's going to lead people in, in all the right areas, whatever's for them because it's, it's all inherently different for each person. Exactly right. And nothing is going to be the same for everyone. What you've experienced, your traumas, what you've experienced in life has set at such a different foundation for you internally. You, you might not even be able to have the same capacity as me to deal with something. So it's like, how can I tell you how to live or how to feel? It's like, you can't. You don't even know what's going on inside of that person's body and head. It's like, you need to listen to yourself. Like you've, yeah. God has designed you in that way for, for a reason. You, you feel that way for a reason. You respond that way for a reason. Back your instinct, back your judgment and just go for it. And at the end of the day, right, what I love about intuition is because it's yours, even if it's wrong, you can live with that, I promise you. Yeah. Whereas if I'm, your, if I'm Mitchell Orville and I tell you, hey, sell your house and do this and then I get it wrong, well, you're going to fucking hate Mitchell Orville and you're going to hate yourself for listening to Mitchell Orville. So yeah, it's like... Yeah, yeah, yeah. So is, 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 what, what, what I want you all to gather from that and I want it really to land on you is the fact of like you've all got your own intuition in your mind you've all got your own um, your own insights that no one else has and you should 100% lean into those yes. in, in your business in your life in your relationship with your wife in the way that you question everything like if you listen listening to those whispers that your body already has and your mind already has in it you start listening to that that's going to guide you where you want you don't need to reach out because I get a lot of I, I know you Nailed get this you get this too like where a lot of young younger lads especially younger lads ask me for advice on this that and the other and they reach out and say Frankie I'm 16 you know should I quit should I quit year 11 at school and I'm like mate because life's t- because like you know I feel like I'm falling behind mate you're 16 years old like I, if but if you sit there and if you're that 16 year old and you've reached out to someone like me and asked me that question sit there with yourself for a moment just think about it logically for a second. You're 16 years old. <laughs> like you got a lot. You got a long life to live, man. You don't need to put yourself under that much pressure. And I think a lot of people out there just gotta allow themselves to feel what That's they it. what they feel and be un be un. Um, don't even judge yourself for the way that you feel. You know what I'm saying? And even if you feel the way and get it wrong, like that's how you learn. You know what I mean? I feel like so so like. So often we're always just trying to get everything right and then right and then right and then right. But you learn nothing through doing that anyway. Getting it wrong is how you learn and make your own make your own decisions and deal with your own consequences and you'll become a far better man anyway. Well, it's empowering, isn't it? Because you can be empowered because you, because you live and die by your own sword and you don't keep operating and living and dying by other people's swords all the time. You Couldn't know, have said it any if better. You, if you hand over your narrative and the way that you feel over to someone else, you leave yourself the opportunity to constantly be disempowered. You know, and... and that's not what you. That's not what you want. That's not how you want to live your life. It's not how you want to operate. It's not how you want to feel. Well, if that's not what you want, then you need to take ownership of the fact that everything that happens in your life, both positive and negative, is your fault. And when you accept that, you can move freely through every level of the game. You know, sometimes sometimes you're going to get fucking wrong, aren't you? Like absolutely. And guess what? That's the best time to learn. It's where everything happens for you. As when you're on your ass, wow. You watch. You learn more on your ass than you do at the top of a fucking mountain. Well. Mate, you've seen, I've seen you strip your life back to literally like start over again in, in, and reinvent yourself. I'm literally, I've literally as as of this point, as we're doing this podcast, I've sold everything. I fly out of the country on Friday. I don't know when I'm going to be back because, and isn't that freeing? Like, Hugely. Like, you know, just, 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 well, you know, I'm not saying, I'm, I'm not saying I'm leaving Australia forever, but it's like, I'm going to go and find bigger 
big podcast that I want. I'm going to go get the biggest episodes I can get. I'm going to go and get the fucking people that I need to get. I'm going to get them on the bus and fuck. And I'm going to put myself in the in the position to be able to do that. And you're going to do it, bro. Yes, yeah, it's, it's sensational. But mate, I just want to say, like again, to you on a personal note, credit to what you've done and how you've redeveloped yourself in this last few years, man. And thanks for coming on and recapping on the changes that have come in your life on this episode mate and I think there's going to be a lot of value and a lot of wisdom and insights that people get from this so no, I, I, um, I really appreciate you bro and thanks for being such a big part and a credit to this country as well you know what I mean you've come down and you've given a lot of Australians and people a voice here in our country bro and we appreciate everything that you do and the voice yeah. that you've got and safe travels bro and we wish you all the best from everyone in Australia man we've been lucky to have you and thanks for everything. Mate I, mate, I appreciate being here. And I'm not saying goodbye forever. I'm just saying I'll see you soon. I've got to go and get bigger episodes for this country. Do bigger fish to fry. I love but, it. But, 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 because what, one thing I noticed was, there was there's not a lot of podcasts podcasters that leave australia and i've already been i've already podcast in four different five different countries already so if i can just keep that trajectory and keep and keep building it i can build it from from a uk audience and build it from a from an australian audience and build it from a build a more global audience that actually gets value from all different kinds of walks of life you can't build the greatest thing by staying in one place you know <sighs> So that's what I've learned. That's what I'll do. But if there's one piece of golden advice that you could just leave and impart on this audience before we leave today, what would it be? My biggest advice would be, who are you when nobody's watching? Work on that character. Work on that person. Love it. Love it. So simple. So succinct. And guys, I hope you got a mad amount of value. I just want to say this is, uh, I think I've got another couple of podcasts I'm recording this week. But if this is the last one that I record in Australia, I just want to say I appreciate all of you. And uh, stay subscribed. Stay on this journey. Send this to all your friends. That's how we grow. That's how we evolve. I appreciate every single one of you. It's been a phenomenal eight and a half years. I'll be back soon uh, in this country. Maybe even make some, I think I've been asked to present something. But if not, anyway... Just follow this journey, man. It's going to be a mad one. It's going to be a mad one. I promise you that. Much love. Amen, brother. Guys, do me a solid favor. Drop a comment below this video and let us know who you want on the podcast next.